Lord has for you today. Amen? Amen. Amen. I can no longer 
feel your presence. Anybody ever been there? It's like, Lord, where are you? Hello? Hello? David says, why are you so far from helping me? And from my words of groaning. He says, listen, Lord, I'm crying out. Have you ever been there to where you cried out to God and you didn't hear an answer at all? I mean, I mean, you wore out your knees, you wore out your eyelashes, you done took the wig off and all that kind of stuff. There's not enough tissue around to help console you and you're crying out to God because what we were taught growing up by big mama and granddaddy is, baby, just go to God with it. Take it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And here it is, I'm taking it to the Lord in prayer. And I'm Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now it's Saturday, I'm about to lose my mind and I can't hear nothing from you. Or anybody been there? To the point where you get so sunk in that you get depressed. Because all you need is a word from the Lord. You're trying to find out, is he ever going to speak to me? And then you start to wonder, am I worthy of even being spoken to? Have I, have, I, have I done too much in life to where God is no longer speaking to me? I'm not talking about three years ago. I'm talking about three months ago. Where I was at that point of the Lord, I'm serving, I'm leading your people. But where I can't hear your voice. And so now you sit there and you drop into a funk and you drop into a depression. You come to church and you don't feel anything. You go hang out with friends and everybody's happy but you're bitter. Then you just stop hanging out with people. You choose to stay in the room. And while you're in the room, you want to dart all day long. You don't want to deal with y'all not, not talking to me. Let me only talk to some real people that love the Lord and, and, and the saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit but go through stuff. And you're just there. God is an answer. And the enemy's telling you that's because you're not worthy to be answered. The enemy's telling you messed up too much. God's not going to answer you now. The enemy has told you God's not going to hear the prayers of a sinner. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God hears the prayers from everybody. But, but, but let, me, let, me, let me help you here. Even though you think you may have strayed too far from him, God has not written you off. God has not forgotten about you. Even though he has not answered. This is what I found out. Two things happen when I don't hear his voice. It's better that he's not answering. It's never that he's not answering. It's because, one, the value of everything else in my life is too high. I can't hear him. i got to turn everything else down. And number two, it's because we're not in the Word. There's a lot of times where God will answer if you just open your Bible. Just open the book and read. Maybe you've been there before where you prayed for God to answer something and you open your Bible and the scripture is right there, in your face right there. If you're looking for God to speak, let me save you $80 a month from a prophet. Open the Bible, it's already in here. Yeah. So he says, I cried in the daytime, but you didn't hear me. And then the night season, I'm still not silent, but you still not hear me. God bless you. But then David kind of shifts a little bit. He says, but you're holy. You are thrown in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted you and delivered them. They cried to you and delivered them. They trusted in you and they were not ashamed. He says, so I know you're holy because Big Mama called on you. And late in the midnight hour, you showed up and turned it around. I know, I know you're faithful because Big Daddy called on you. And late in the midnight hour, you showed up and you turned that thing around. What's wrong with me? Why can't I seem to get a prayer through? God, where are you? This psalm is known as the psalm of the, of the sufferer, the forsaken sufferer. Jesus on the cross felt like the forsaken sufferer. When he was on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou what? Forsaken me. It wasn't that God was estranged from him. It's just because he took on the sin of the weight of the world, he was separated from God. And we all know that sin will separate us from the presence of God. And so, and, and so, and so, and so what I learned to do, now this was me three months ago. I'm not going to tell you, listen, this, 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 y'all, y'all ain't, y'all, y'all ain't got no issues. It's just me. This was me three months ago in a very dark, 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 dark place. And I'm in here smiling at y'all, knowing that I'm hiding behind this smile. I would leave this pulpit and get in the truck, and I would cry down the freeway simply because he gave me enough strength to stand here, but I was battling something internally. Yeah. Now, this is going to mess with people up because a lot of people in the church don't believe and they, they think it's an issue. I had to go see a therapist, right. and I, I, I had to sit down with a therapist and cry, what is wrong with me? Right. God is good. He's been, he's been good to me my whole entire life. He sustained our family when our family was hit with trauma, when my father passed away, and then we had to adopt the two children. And, all the, and I'm going down all these things and how God has been great, and she's looking back at me, I'm looking at her, and I said, so what is wrong with me? Why does it feel like I'm not worthy enough to hear from God? Yeah. Thank God for a Christian therapist. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. thank God for a Christian therapist. Yeah. And at the end of the day, she looked at me and she said, there is absolutely 
honestly, there's nothing wrong with you. She said, God is speaking. You just can't hear him. She said, God is speaking, but you're carrying the weight of so many walls on your shoulders that you can't pause to hear him for a minute. She said, I guarantee you, if you drop everything, you'll start to hear him clearly. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but it's possible that you can't hear from God because you're carrying too much. And at that moment, I started dropping stuff. So stupid. Yeah. Before you ever start to hear God a whole lot clearer. We always think, we think sin, we think sin, sin, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yes, that separates, but do you understand that being too busy and preoccupied is sin? Putting more on your plate than God has assigned you to have on your plate is sin. Carrying more than God designed for you to carry is So you can say, I don't drink. So I don't say you got to be separated from God. You might be too busy in somebody else's business. That ain't your business. That's okay. Some of y'all anxious over somebody else's business. There you go. Let it do it to you. If you don't mind your business, drink some water and be careful about yourself. But no, this is what happens. This is what happens to us. This is what happens to us. They, they, they can let us know. He gave us the insight and again, prophetically, he was speaking about Jesus. But do you know that when you're under that kind of stress, under that kind of pressure, it takes a physical toll on your body? You can't smile. That's one. Your joints locked up, that's two. Right. You have an indigestion, that's three. Right. Your heart is racing when you're trying to rest, that's four. You get migraines out of nowhere, that's five. And I'm only speaking a few things. When you are that overwhelmed and overburdened in the spirit, it starts to affect your physical body. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5, through 6, y'all know this is my favorite scripture. Trust the Lord all your heart. Lean out into your own understanding. In all your ways of knowledge, he will what? Direct your path. Verse 8 says, as a result of trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord means putting everything that you have that's burning you on his shoulders. Lay it literally at his feet so you can walk around freely. The benefit of trusting the Lord and giving him everything is in verse 8 in Proverbs 3. Then you will have health in your body. What if I told you some of us have sickness because we're worried about too much? Yeah, okay, all right, okay, okay. David said, verse 22, chapter 22, verse 14, sorry. I have poured out like water. He says, look, I'm depleted. I'm low. All my bowls are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melted within me. My strength is dried up like a fast hurt. And my tongue clings to my jaws. You brought me to the dust of death. David said, I'm so overwhelmed that my body is in pain. My heart is melting. Now, why is that key? Because the scripture says, don't get weary in well doing. For a due season you show if you don't lose heart. My heart is belted. That means I've lost heart. David said, David said that I believe. He said, I believe in my heart and I receive the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When the enemy knows he can melt your heart, he knows he can move your hope away from And so David says, now my body is in pain. I'm in agony. God, where are you? This stuff is stressing over me. I'm, I'm literally about to lose my mind. Can I help us understand that when we feel estranged from God, that's when he's at his closest. Yeah, yeah. The enemy knows God is close to him. So he throws everything else in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sitting in that chair with that lady. And quite frankly, I thought she was rather nosy. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I'm not used to opening up to people. I was like, so you gotta, you know, kind of ease me into this. She asked me questions about my family. My upbringing, got into stuff that I food I like. I'm like, what's food I can believe it? But she said, I just want to know the person a little bit. And so we're sitting there, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. And she said, Do you ever have a feeling at night while you're sleeping that you got to jump up because something's going to happen if you're not around? I said, Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. She said, Okay, that's cool. She said, Fine. She said, Do you ever have a moment? Of urgency. You can be calm, sit down and watch the TV, and all of a sudden your heart starts racing, thinking of a possibility of what may happen. I said, yeah, that's, that's me. She said, okay. She said, well, I'm going to tell you something. She said, it's not clinical depression. She said, that would require medication. Mm -hmm. She said that you're battling with depression. Mm -hmm. so, me? <laughs> you don't go somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> it's me you're talking about. She said, I know you try to put it off. She said, well, look at all this, you're back on depression. I'm being open with y'all this morning because there's many of us sitting in these pews right now back with depression. But we've been told to plead the blood of Jesus and whack out that was going on with us. 
we've been told to come to church and smile, smile and shout and dance and go, oh, like nothing's going on with us. The problem is that is that is that is a, a, a resume of an unhealthy body. Because so many of us think that if we just put on some makeup and get to church, everything's going to be okay. But you still got to take that makeup off and deal with that problem when you get home. So when our brothers come to church and we're hiding behind this masculinity that we have, we want to be the security. We want to hold up the walls of the church. We want to be the deep voices of the church. We want people to see us as the leaders, as the husbands, as the priests of the home. But meanwhile, behind closed doors, we're battling with thoughts of depression. And we're crying out to God because we won't know. That's the thing about us brothers. We seldom go cry out in front of people. But when we get to our we get to ourselves, we start punching the steering wheel and we start crying out and yelling in the car. We're crying out to God. Not that we're angry with him, but we don't feel his presence. Yeah. 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 That lady said you've got to turn down everything around you in order to hear God. So then David gave us another piece of this. Because you know when you're down, that's when the bones are coming out. Yeah. 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 When you're down, if you don't believe me, just go into the desert one day. And if you ever see a bunch of vultures circling around the desert, there's something that's either dead or dying or just dying right in and there. When you are down, when you are depressed, that's when Satan sends the vultures out at you. Oh, yeah. Psalm 22 and 17, he says, Dogs have surrounded. You got some dogs surrounding you right now because they think they're weak and vulnerable. You got some dogs surrounding you right now that never wanted to see you succeed in the first place. And now that you're struggling, now that you're down, they said, now we got it. We knew she wasn't going to amount to anything. Here come the dogs. Now check this says, the congregation of the wicked have enclosed me. This, this, this is what this looks like. The people that are around you, when you're down, suddenly they're not around you anymore. Then you got people that don't respond to your deliverance, but they want to play in your dysfunction. You got people that'll be there. Post something on Facebook dysfunctional to let people think you got something going on. You get all kind of reactions. Then turn around and post your deliverance. It's crickets. He said, dogs are dogs. It's just absolute true. Dogs are surrounding me. He says, they pierce my hands and my feet. This is my brother was speaking. He says, I can count on my bones. They look at me and they stare at me. David said that my body is now going through something. Y'all ain't been there because y'all y'all got all together. But have you ever been worried to the point where you got sick in your body? Yes. And you couldn't eat? Yes. Yeah, and everything you ate, you ate a bite of it, and you didn't have an appetite anymore. Have you been there? And it lasted more than one or two or three days, and your face complexion started to change. You started to get a little pale in the face. And before you, David said, I'm going through. My body is changing as a result of the duress. My spirit is under right now. I'm here to tell you that you're not by yourself. See, you go to church and nobody's going to preach to you about the mind and the mental health of the mind, but we're going to get it right here. Amen. Because God is tired of us putting on suits and playing church. Amen. Speaking deliverance, speaking wholeness, preaching deliverance, preaching wholeness, and we're the biggest ones that need deliverance. Amen. Don't let this color fool you. I'm a mess too. Amen. If you want to go to a church where the preacher is not a mess, let us know, and we're going to give you a direction to one. We give you an address, start time, and everything else. But if you want to come somewhere where the leaders can be authentic and true, and let you know that just because we have on college on first Sunday does not exempt us from the trials of life, you're in the right place. There are no big eyes, there are no big blue, no little use. The same devil that wants you wants us just the same. And so he says, listen, I'm so distraught right now that my body is starting to transform. I'm losing weight because I can't eat. And what I eat, I can't hold down. There's a clinical thing about anxiety and depression that even when you do eat, your body has a natural response to throw it all back up. I can't hold nutrients in my body. And the vultures are around me. They can see that I'm sick. And I know they're vultures because they're not praying. They're praying. Amen. 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 P-R-A-Y to P-R-E-Y. I know they're vultures because they're not praying. They're praying over me. Yeah. Lord, where are you? My body is changing. My mind is depressed. I'm crying out all night long, and I still can't hear you. Have you been there? Yeah. Oh, I'm about to lose my mind. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's another thing about this church. We ain't too saved or we're not to be We know who we live. Y'all can make me lose my mind. I'm in here. So David, 
in desperation calls out to God. And this woman in desperation, he gets all the way to verse 20, where he's complaining that he can't hear God. My wife preached a message a while ago, a while ago about changing your perception. And David kind of echoed that. Because when you're in this mess, if you just change your perception, all of a sudden you start to see that God is closer than he's ever been. If we just change our perception. See, Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, don't copy the customs and behaviors of the world. So when the world, the world says when life is going crazy, you should just go crazy. Right. Because everything is crashing around you. Amen. But we are not of the world. So we don't copy their behavior. We do the opposite. Meaning that when life gets crazy, that's when Jesus gets closer. Yes. 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 Tell somebody to change your perception. So then David changes his perception. He goes to verse 20 and 21. He says, save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. He says, you have answered me. Now this is most crazy. This is crazy. The word never said that God gave David an audible answer at all. But David said, you would answer me. The word never said that God said, David, everything's going to be all right. David just said, and you answered me. So you might want to ask him, how did David know that God answered him if the Bible now never let us know that God said anything. Right. Hello, Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came. Yeah. And rested on David and gave him peace that passes all of us yeah. 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 Here, Here's the great thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not need your permission to interrupt your program. As soon as you call out on God, God now God hear what I'm saying. Yeah. Jesus said, I will ask my Father to send the Comforter. And that's what he is, the Comforter. Which means that when you're overwhelmed and you're anxious, the Comforter and the person of the Holy Spirit will come and rest on your shoulders yeah. See, see, we, 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 we need to get beyond thinking the Holy Spirit is just something that's going to make you run around the church. Because after you get done running, you still got to deal with life. Yeah. After you get done shouting and speaking in whatever tongue you're going to speak in, you still got to deal with life. You better stop thinking the Holy Spirit is only available on Sunday. Baby, I'm going to be honest with you, I needed him last night. And then midnight, Lord, I need the Spirit to come from me. Yeah. Listen now, David is all right. All right. The Holy Ghost came in. I've got a feeling everything's so. going to be all right. Yeah. I read that and I smiled because I think about the last time, about three months ago, when I was in this emotional predicament. Didn't know how to express myself. Been with this woman for almost 20 years. She knows me inside and out. And I think even she said, okay, I'm going to throw my hands up. I don't know what to do. To the point where everybody knows. Kayla, you know, everything just knows. To the point where daddy didn't work. I was just stone cold. Nothing would really. I was confrontational. Right. You say anything, I'm about to set it off. <laughs> <laughs> this side of baby can say this side of baby. Come on, they still pulling their stuff over there. They over there saying nothing. Don't if you step on their toe right now, they're going to swear on you. Yeah. So I'm just talking to the real folks over here. I was like, even my even the church mothers are thugs. They got it, they know. <laughs> but, but I was confrontational. When I say confrontational, I don't mean disagree. No, we can disagree. I, I'm, I'm a master of disagreeing and walking on the good. But I'm talking about we disagree. We'll pull up there. I mean, I saw confrontation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll put you on this side. <laughs> Oh, all, all the turning of the cheekers over here. We don't get that. <laughs> but I was confrontational. I was rebellious. Yeah. Yeah. Not taking orders, not following through. I was looking for a fight. Oh my God. <laughs> and one night, without even asking, the Holy Spirit just came and rested on me. You ever been arrested by the Holy Spirit? I mean, happy bound where I couldn't move. And I felt like Jacob kind of wrestled with him in Genesis 26. And the Lord said, I'm not going to let you go until you listen. And once I sat there and listened for a minute, he said, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not depressed. You're not anxious. You're just overwhelmed. Y'all catch that? Y'all catch that? I believe that's what happened to me. I believe the Lord let that day in verse 20 and said, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not about to die. I need you to understand that I have you in the palm of my hand. You are my children. When I know that you came when you were a little boy, I've been with you every step of the way, even when you 
transgress me, he still are after my own heart. I still have a plan for you. I believe that's what the Holy Spirit will do in the middle of your anxiety, in the middle of your depression. He will speak to you in a still voice and say, everything is going to be all right. Yeah. If you haven't been there, keep on living. It's coming. He's going to speak to you in a still yeah. voice. And here's the greatest part about it. There's not going to be a praise break. There's not going to be a band. There's not going to be a bunch of people. It's going to be you, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord. So now at this point, David said, we might as well have a praise party. David says, I will declare to you and your name to my brother. Right. He said, even while I'm in this, I'm going to go around and I'm going to proclaim your name to everybody. Right. I'm going to tell everybody who Jesus is in my life. Yeah, I'm still going through it, but the Holy Spirit helped me. And when the Holy Spirit came to visit me, he didn't change the situation, but he changed me in the situation. So now I'm not tripping over it. He said, I'm going to proclaim your name. The next time you ask about that situation, I'm not going to tell you the situation, I'm going to tell you the problem solver. But then too, but then too, he, then too, he says, I will praise him in the midst of the assembly. He says, when I get around people that are gathered to praise his name, ain't nobody going to think me praising him. The old church used to say, you can't tell him like I can. Amen. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. Yeah. So excuse me if we in church and I step on your toe, but I got to praise to get out because he's giving me all the wrong. Mammals have to breathe through nostrils. Right. Right. Like that. 
Mammals breathe through what? Breathe through lungs. By virtue of being a mammal, I can't live. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> Strange people looking at me, this big old man walking out, I'm not a C, that's what I was doing. <laughs> but yeah, but a little mermaid, a little mermaid, a little mermaid, she was in love with somebody, and he was in love with her. He couldn't go live with her because he didn't have gills to live. I'm not a C. Yeah, y'all can see your right now. What do you preach about? I'm not asking you. I don't understand you. That's what's different, y'all. But I learned this about whales. Whales live under the sea. But every once in a while, they got to come above the sea to breathe in order to get back into. What that lets me know is their environment is not conducive to keep them alive. Let's we know that although they live in that environment, they can't survive that environment without coming out of that environment to get some Okay, y'all with me? Paul said in Philippians 3 that we are citizens of heaven. We don't belong here. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. The only way we're going to survive in this world that wasn't built to sustain us and so every once in a while we gotta leave out of this world, go above water. God, you know, hear me? See, here's the thing. When I leave this world to go above water to breathe, that's when I get met with the breath of the Holy Spirit. When I go up to breathe, I get strength and I can come back down and live. When I go up there to breathe, I can get strength and I come back down and work. When I leave out of here to go breathe, I can come back down. And I can, this is what the God the Bible is saying right now. He says, learn to live like a whale. Amen. Understand that you have to operate here. Because you can't survive here without leaving here and coming up to see the Father for some bread. So the first thing I need you to understand is one, Jesus knows. And two, every once in a while, we got to leave the water. Whatever the water is in your life, it could be your family. You gotta leave the water for a minute and go up to see Jesus. The water may be work. Whatever it is that's drowning you, whatever it is that's keeping you like you, like you just can barely survive. You barely trick. If it's your marriage, leave the marriage for a minute to go above ground to see Jesus and see what happens. Whatever it is that has you drowned, you gotta come out of it for a minute. The reason why you haven't survived thus far, because you're going to other people that live in the water. <laughs> them people got them people got they the same source that you in. <laughs> the only way you're going to survive is if you come up out of where you are Amen. and let the Father breathe into you. Amen. Then you can go back down and do what you need. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Therapist told me, Trick, this is a bold meeting. She says, Mr. Shepherd, she said, when you feel like your temper's getting ready to play, yeah. she said, I want you to exhale sharply. And inhale deeply. Okay. You want know, to be honest with y'all? Yes. Yes. <laughs> something happened at the house. <laughs> Elijah did something. Yeah. I felt the hope get ready to come out. Uh oh. Okay. He's sitting there looking at me. Just for a brief moment. 
and let the breath of God consume you. By the time you come back down to that environment, everything's going to be okay. Amen. Now, you can't leave your environment because your environment is your assignment. You're assigned to that crazy husband. You're assigned. <laughs> <laughs>
So you're going to get free, then you're going to share the Lord's table. We're going to leave out here smiling. Amen? Amen. Is that all right? Is that all right? See 
receive their deliverance. Yes. Yes. We're able to reach out their hands, Father God, to others who still may need you, God. Yes. To direct them, Father God, directly to you so that they may receive their deliverance as well. So we thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. Thank you. 